Hi guys, it's Trevor, and this is Discovering Gay History. Okay. All right. I have been putting this off and putting this off and putting this off because it's so huge and <laughs> there's just a lot of opinions about it. So today, I am tackling the Stonewall Riots. All right, let's just get into it. Okay, so there is a lot that leads up to the Stonewall Riots and we have discussed a lot of that. So if you have not seen my video, Barbara Giddings, Frank Camney, Harry Hay, the Cooper Donut Riots, the Gene Compton protests, and the Black Cat protests, you need to go watch those. Because without all of that happening, Stonewall couldn't have happened. So go, go. We'll be here for you when you're ready. All right, welcome back. Thanks for doing the research. Now I don't have to like go into the backstory. So here we go. Now, a historian named David Carter made this connection. So Stonewall was owned by the mafia, like a lot of gay bars in New York City at the time. And what they would do is pay off the cops to tip them off of the raids. In the year of Stonewall, the mafia was blackmailing people on Wall Street and making a shit ton more money doing that than operating these gay bars. The police were upset that they weren't getting kickbacks from this extortion, and so they were taking it out on the mafia-owned gay bars defund the NYPD. They were shutting down the Stonewall Inn in response to the blackmail and not getting kickbacks. So the Stonewall Inn was a shithole, right? They overcharged for drinks. They watered the drinks down. There was no running water. Sanitation was out the window. The toilets didn't work. It was dark and seedy, but it was popular. It was popular for a lot of reasons. It allowed transgender people in, it allowed drag queens in, and a lot of gay places at that time didn't do that, did not, especially transgender women. And another thing is that it was a place that actually allowed gay dancing, which was also something that wasn't very popular at the time. So it made Stonewall a community hangout, despite it being this seedy shithole. Now we have to remember that this was not the first riot or protest or, or gay movement. Without the groundwork that Frank Camney, Barbara Giddings, and the riots in, in San Francisco did, Stonewall wouldn't have had the impact that it had. I'm just gonna keep saying that. Okay, so you remember the sip-in from yesterday? I'll wait, go watch yesterday's video. So Robert Wagner was cleaning up the city for the World's Fair and getting rid of gay people and gay, gay spaces. So what the cops were instructed to do was remove liquor license and shut places down that catered to gay men and lesbians. Remember, drag queens, transgender, sex workers weren't welcome in places like this. So what they would do is go undercover into these places, start chatting up a suspected deviant, and once a man bought another man a drink, he was arrested for solicitation. That's what they were doing all throughout the city. In addition to the raids, the Stonewall in particular would slip a envelope of cash to police officers and it was called a gayola and the police would look the other way. Um, Stonewall Inn did not have its liquor license. Now to get in the Stonewall Inn, um, you had to know the door guy. You would look through a peephole to make sure that you at least looked gay. And on weekends, cover was $3 and you had to sign your name in a book to be part of the bottle club. Um, it was just sort of all of these loopholes to let the space exist. People wouldn't write their real names in the book and you really had to know someone who knew someone to get in. Now these mafia owned gay bars were rated at least once a month. And it was such a regular thing that the bartenders would keep like secret stashes of liquor behind cabinets and in secret holes in the wall so that they could go about services as quick as possible. Typically, these mafia-owned bars were tipped off about raids coming their way so that they could get back up to service once the police had left. The night of the Stonewall riots, that was not the case. Now, a typical raid looked like this. So the lights would turn on, the police would, would lock the doors and round everyone up and ask for identification. Now, like I've said in many videos, if your identification card 
gender did not match the gender expression that you were presenting, you would be arrested. So those without identification and certainly those dressed in drag were arrested and everyone else was allowed to leave. So at 1.20 a.m. on June 28th, 1969, four plainclothes officers, two uniformed police officers, a detective and an inspector raided the Stonewall Inn. They announced that the police were here and they were there to take the place and the lights were turned on and the door was barred. There were approximately 205 patrons in the bar that night and those who had been experienced a raid before like ran for the doors and windows, but the undercover police officers and the detectives were there and they had all the exits covered. So they arrested a bunch of patrons and the paddy wagons had not arrived yet to take the people to jail. So they lined up the arrested individuals outside the bar and they had to wait like 15 minutes for the patrol wagon to arrive. And as they were waiting, a crowd started to form outside of the bar. And what started as sort of a humorous mocking of the police, there were shouts of gay power and the crowd started to sing, we shall overcome. It slowly started to become more and more hostile as more people arrived. It started to get really dicey when an officer shoved a drag queen into the paddy wagon. She responded by knocking him in the head with her purse. <laughs> then they pulled a butch lesbian into the patrol car and she shouted out, why don't you do something? And then it was heard in the crowd that the bar did not pay off the cops. And so the crowd decided to pay off the cops and they started yelling, let's pay them off. They were throwing coins in the air and throwing beer cans at the cops. And they started shouting pigs and faggot cops. And the police were had a fire hose, but the water pressure wasn't off. So it just sort of like ignited the crowd further. It, it got messy. Now the next morning, the New York Times, the New York Post, and the Daily News had the story covered. Now the following night, there's some conflicting information of which night of the riots was more violent, but the following night there were even more people. People returned from the previous night. We've got even, even tourists taking part. What witnesses say was most remarkable about the second night was these public displays of homosexual affection. People felt this liberation to express romantically and physically out in the open for the first time. Now, Sylvia Rivero witnessed her friends jump on a car and the crowd like shake the car and like, terrify the occupants of the car. One of Marsha P. Johnson's friends got on top of a patrol car and dropped a heavy bag through it, shattering the windshield. It was wild. Now, shortly after that, the Gay Liberation Front was founded and the fight for gay rights was in full force after that. There were flyers announcing the Gay Liberation Front spread around and, and it read, do you think homosexuals are revolting? You bet your sweet ass we are. So while the Stonewall Inn is full of mystery and misinformation, and, and although it was not the beginning of the gay rights movement, it was a critical turning point in the community organizing in, in many facets. Okay. I think that's it. We'll see you tomorrow.